fundamental theorem of calculus is uh, one of the most important things that you're going to learn in this class, and it's how to basically uh, do definite integrals and definite integrals that have variables in the uh, upper and lower bound. So the fundamental theorem of calculus first states that if you have some function uh, f of t dt and you integrate it from any a to b you get f of a minus f of b so and, and I mean capital F of a and capital F of b so this is the antiderivative of this you evaluate it at and I wrote this backwards f of b minus f of a <coughs> You evaluate it at the upper bound, and you evaluate it at the lower bound, and take the difference of them. This is, again, this is like what we call a definite integral, and we're going to have that in another video with a lot of other things about definite integrals. But, if you have variables in your bounds, that can also uh, take into effect here. So, if you want to do, for example, the derivative of the integral from 1 to x, of f of t dt. So now, this is a little bit different because we don't just have numbers in the bounds of our integral. We have a variable there. This fundamental theorem of calculus says is f of x. So let's think about how we can generalize this. So the fundamental theorem of calculus, I believe you probably have seen this referred to as part two of the fundamental theorem of calculus is that if you're integrating, if you're doing the derivative of an integral, you can't just get rid of it. There's a little bit of stipulation here. So if you're doing a derivative of the integral, so of some function g of x to some other function h of x. So by writing those, I'm saying that those can be variables. They don't have to just be constant numbers. Of some function f of t, dt. How we evaluate this is you have to evaluate this function at the upper bound. So we have f of h of x times the derivative. You can think of it, it's kind of like chain rule, times the derivative of what we plugged in there, h prime of x. And then we do the same thing for the bottom. We would do minus f of g of x. times g prime of x. And this is what the fundamental theorem of calculus states. So whenever you see a problem where you have to do the derivative of an integral, you always have to do it by this method. Now keep in mind, let's see how this translated to the easy example that we just thought of here. First we plug in x to our function, we get f of x times the derivative of x, which is 1. And then we subtract f of 1 times the derivative of 1, which is 0. So you can see if you're doing the derivative of an integral, if either of your bounds here is just a constant, that term is going to disappear because the derivative of it is going to be 0. So in this case, we didn't have to subtract anything because the bottom one was a constant anyway. That should make sense if you take the integral of something from a constant to another constant, Whenever you do a definite integral like that, your answer is always a number. So if you did the derivative of that, you would get zero if these were both constants. So in doing the derivative of an integral, you always have to take into account, you plug in the variable into your function, but then also do the derivative of it. And that's the fundamental theorem of calculus.